Hello and welcome to the Corp Maths video solutions to the midpoint of two numbers practice questions. In this video, I'm going to go through the solutions to the midpoint of two numbers practice questions. If you do want the video tutorial on Corp Maths on midpoint of two numbers or find it halfway between two numbers, if you go to corpmavs.com forward slash contents and go to video 217, that'll be a video where I explain how to find the midpoint of two numbers. And if you scan this QR code, that'll bring you to that video as well. Okay, so let's get started. So in this video, I'm just going to be doing the answers as I would normally do them. Um, hopefully that'll be helpful for you so if you need to check them so question one says work out the number that's halfway between 20 and 70 so whenever I'm finding the midpoint of two numbers I like to add them together and divide by two so I'm gonna do 70 plus 20 or 20 plus 70 and 20 plus 70 is 90 and then I'm gonna take on my 90 and I'm gonna divide that by 2 and that's equal to 45 so mid halfway between 20 and 70 is 45 and let's just check it to get from 20 to 45 that would be add 25 and if we add another 25 to 45 we would get 70 so 45 is the midpoint or the halfway between 20 and 70 okay next question Question two says find the midpoint of eight and 22. So eight plus 22 is equal to 30. And then 30 divided by two is equal to 15. So the midpoint of eight and 22 is 15. And again, we can check it. If we add seven, we get to 15. If we add number seven, we would get to 22. Okay, our next question. Question three says find the number that's halfway between 11 and 37. So 11 plus 37 is equal to 48. And then 48 divided by two is equal to 24. So the midpoint or the number halfway between 11 and 37 is 24. So question four says find the midpoint of 36 and 50. So 36 plus 50 is equal to 86. Then 86 divided by two is equal to 43. So the midpoint of 36 and 50 would be 43. Okay, our next question, question five. So question five says, work out the number that's halfway between 125 and 275. Now the great thing is, whenever I add 125 and 275, well, 275 plus 25 would be 300, add another 100 would be 400. So adding them together gives us 400, and then 400 divided by two would be equal to 200. So the number halfway between 125 and 275 would be 200. And again, if we check it, to get from 125 to 200, we could add 75, and then if we add another 75, we would get to 275. Okay, question six. Question six says, work out the number that's halfway between three and 10. So three plus 10 is equal to 13. And then if we take our 13 and divide it by two, that tells us the number halfway between them. So 12 divided by two is six, and 14 divided by two is seven. So this is in between, so it's gonna be 6.5. So half of 13 is 6.5 or six and a half. So the number halfway between three and 10 is 6.5. And whenever you're finding the number halfway between an even number and an odd number, it will always be a 0.5, it will always be maybe 6.5 and so on. Okay, let's have a look at question seven. So question seven says, work out the number that's halfway between 14 and 57. Again, I can see one's odd and one's even, so it's going to be a 0.5. So we're going to have 14 plus 57, and 14 plus 57 is equal to 71. And this is a calculator question, so that's quite nice. We can do 71 divided by 2, and when we do 71 divided by 2, we get 35.5. So the number halfway between 14 and 57 would be 35.5. Okay, let's have a look at question eight. So question eight says, work out the number that's halfway between 1.9 and 2.7. So let's add them together. So 2.7, and this is non-calculator, so let's line them up, 2.7 and 1.9, and our plus sign, and put our decimal point beneath them. Seven plus nine is 16, so put our six down, carry a one. Two plus one is three, plus one is four. So adding 1.9 and 2.7 gives us 4.6. Now we need to do 4.6 divided by two. And that's quite nice, because half of 4.6 would be 2.6. 3, because half of 4 is 2 and half of 0 0.6 is 0 0.3 so the answer would be 2.3 and again we can check it if we added 0 0.4 onto 1.9 we would get 2.3 and if we added another 0 0.4 we would get 2.7 okay let's have a look at question 9 so question 9 says work out the number that's halfway between 4.2 and 5.8 so again let's add them up 5.8 and 4.2 lining them up put our plus sign 8 plus 2 is 10 so put our 0 down carry our 1 5 plus 4 is 9, plus 1 is 10. So adding these two numbers together gives us 10. And then 10 divided by 2 is equal to 5. So the number halfway between 4.2 and 5.8 is 5. And again, we can check it. If we add a 0.8 onto 4.2, we would get 5. And if we add another 0.8, we would get 5.8. 
Okay, let's have a look at question 10. So question 10 says, work out the number that's halfway between 3.9 and 4.8. So 4.8 plus 3.9. So we line those up and add them. 8 plus 9 is 17, so put our 7 down, carry our 1. 4 plus 3 is 7, plus 1 is 8. So adding these two numbers together gives us 8.7. Now we need to do 8.7 divided by 2. And let's do that using the bus shelter method. So 8.7 divided by 2. Put our decimal point above. So 2 goes into 8 4 times, so that'll be 4. And then 2 goes into 7 3 times remainder 1, so that's 3 times. And then put a 0 and put remainder 1. And 2 goes into 10 5 times. So 8.7 divided by 2 is 4.35. So the midpoint of 3.9 and 4.8 would be 4.35. We find that by adding the two numbers together and then dividing by 2. So the answer would be 4.35. Okay, let's have a look at question number 11. So question number 11 says, work out the number that's halfway between negative 3 and 7. So negative 3 plus 7. So let's do negative 3 plus 7. So if we added 3 to negative 3, we would get to 0. We've then got a number 4, so negative 3 plus 7 is 4. Now we need to divide that by 2, so 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2. So add negative 3 and 7 together is equal to 4. I like to think about that in terms of bank accounts. If I had negative 3 pound in the bank and I put 7 pound into the bank, my bank balance would then say 4 pound. And then if I divided that by 2, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So the number halfway between negative 3 and 7 is 2. And let's just check it. To get from negative 3 to 2, we would add 5. And if we added another 5, we would get to 7. Okay, let's have a look at question number 12. Question number 12 says, work out the number that's halfway between negative 15 and negative 2. So we need to add them together, so we get negative 15 plus negative 2. Now when we add a positive number, it goes up, and whenever we add a negative number, it goes down. So we've got negative 15, and we're going to add negative 2, which means we're going to take away 2, it's going to go down by 2. So if we had negative 15, it would go down by 2, so it would be negative 16, negative 17. So adding those numbers together will give us negative 17. We now need to do negative 17 divided by 2. So half of 17 is 8.5, half of negative 17 will be negative 8.5. So the answer is negative 8.5. And that's it. So adding the numbers together is negative 17 divided by 2 is negative 8.5. Okay, let's have a look at number 13. So question number 13 says, work out the number that's halfway between negative 10 and 25. So we'll add the two numbers together. So negative 10 plus 25. Well, negative 10 plus 25, well, adding 10 would bring us to 0. We then get number 15, so that'll be 15. So negative 10 plus 25 is 15. And then if we take our 15 and divide that by 2, that gives us 7.5. So that would be 7.5. So let's have a look at question number 14. So number 14 says, work out the number that's halfway between 1.15 and 5.24. So let's add them together, 1.15 plus 5.24. And when we add those two numbers together, and it's a calculator question, we get that's equal to 6.39. Now we need to divide by 2, so we're going to take our 6.39 and we're going to divide that by 2. And whenever we do 6.39 divided by 2, we get that's equal to 3.195. So the answer would be 3.195. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question number 15. So question number 15, we're dealing with temperatures, and it says work out the temperature that's halfway between negative 3 degrees Celsius and 7 degrees Celsius. So again, we want to add our numbers, negative 3 plus 7. And negative 3 plus 7 is equal to 4 because negative 3 add 3 is 0, and then we've got another 4 to add, so then that'll be 4. And then if we take our 4 and divide that by 2, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So that's it. So the midpoint of negative 3 and 7 is 2 degrees Celsius. So let's have a look at question number 16. So question number 16 says, work out the number that's halfway between 1.6 and 1.7. Now, actually, I can see the answer quite quickly here because it's in between halfway between 1.6 and 1.7. I think it's going to be 1.65. And let's just check it. 1.6 plus 1.7 is equal to 3.3. And we can just check that. 1.7 plus 1.6, lining them up. 7 plus 6 is equal to 13. Put our 3 down, carry our 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. So we've got 3.3. Now we need to do 3.3 divided by 2. And again, let's use our bus shelter method for that. So 3.3 divided by 2 and I've just put an extra zero on the end here. So 2 into 3 goes once, remainder 1. 2 into 13 goes 6 times, remainder 1. And 2 into 10 goes 5 times. So we've got an answer of 1.65. And if you have 1.6 and 1.7, halfway in between would be 1.65. And I can just imagine a number line going 1.61, 1.62, 1.63, 1.64, 1.65, which would be in the middle, and so on. Okay, so that's question number 16. 
So let's have a look at question number 17. So Caroline says that 20% is halfway between 10% and 3 fifths. Is Caroline correct? You must explain your answer. So what would be really useful in this question is if our 3 fifths was a percentage. So let's write our 3 fifths as a percentage. So 3 fifths is the same as 0.6. And we can do that by using our bus shelter method. We could do 3 divided by 5. So we could do 3 divided by 5 and just put in a point and a zero. 5 into 3 goes 0 times, remainder of 3. And 5 into 30 goes 6 times, so that would be 0.6. Or just learn that a fifth is 0.2, so 3 fifths would be 0.6. So 3 fifths is equal to 0 0.6, but that means that would also be equal to 60%. So that's our fraction decimal percentage. So that means that 3 fifths is 60%. So we've got 10% and 60%. And we want to find the number of midway between them. We want to find the number halfway between them. So let's do 10 plus 60, which is equal to 70. And 70 divided by 2 is equal to 35. Now, Caroline says that it's 20%, but well, that's not correct because 35% is halfway between ten percent and three fifths which is sixty percent and that's it okay let's have a look at question number 18 so question number 18 so question number 18 says Jason and Gary think of two different numbers and the midpoint of the two numbers is 23 and Jason says his number is 9 what is the number that Gary's thinking of? So we've got two numbers. We've got nine, which is Jason's number, and we've got this other number, which is Gary's number. And we know that the midpoint of those two numbers is 23. Now, there's two different ways we can do this. One way is, remember, we've been adding the two numbers together and dividing by two, and then that's been giving us our midpoint. So we could work backwards. We could take our 23, times that by two, which would be equal to 46. So we know that whenever we add them together and divide by two, we would get 23. So if we add them together, then it would just be 46. And then if we took our 46 and took away the nine, we'll get the other number. 46 take away nine is 37. So that means that Gary's number is 37. So that's one way to look at it. Another way that question could have been done rather than working backwards is to think, well, to get from nine to the midpoint, well, we would have to add 14 to get from nine to 23. So if we added another 14, we would get our number and then that would be 37. So Gary was thinking of the number 37. Question number 19. So question number 19 says, Wendy and Sally are thinking of two different numbers. The midpoint of the two numbers is 12.5. Wendy says her number is five. So that means that Wendy's thinking of the smaller number. We've then got Sally's number, which is the bigger number. And we know that in the middle is 12.5. Now we've got two different ways we can do this. We can take this number, we can multiply it by two, which would be 25 because double 12.5 is 25. And then we could take away five and that would leave us 20. So that means that the answer would have to be 20 that Sally's number is 20 or another way to do it is to get from 5 to the midpoint we would add 7.5 so if we add another 7.5 we would get 20 okay let's have a look at our next question question 20 so question 20 says Alison has £1.40 and Scott has £2.90 and the question is, how much money should Scott give Alison? How much should Scott give Alison so that they have the same amount of money? So let's find the midpoint first of all. Let's find that middle amount of money. So we have got the amount of money. Let's add them together. So £2.90 and £1.40. I'm just changing it into pence and we're going to add them together. So 0 plus 0 is 0. 9 plus 4 is 13. So put our free down carrier 1. And 2 plus 1 plus 1 is 4. So in total, they've got £4.30. And if we take our £4.30 and we divide that by 2, we would get 2 into 4 goes twice, 2 into 3 goes once, remainder 1, and 2 into 10 goes 5 times. So the middle amount of money, the midpoint of their money would be £2.15. So we now know the midpoint of £2.90 and £1.40 is £2.15. And what that means is if we added their money together in half, that, that they could have £2.15 each. And that would be a fair amount. So that would mean that they would have the same amount of money. So if we take £2.15 away from £2.90, we can see how much money Scott should give Alison. So if we take £290 and take away £215, we'll see how much money he should give her. So 0 take away 5, we can't do So let's borrow. So that would be an 8 and a 10. 10 take away 5 is 5, 8 take away 1 is 7, and 2 take away 2 is 0. So that's 75p. So that means that if Scott gives Alison 75p, they should have the same amount of money. And let's check it. If we had £1.40 and we added 75p, we would get £2.15. And if we had £2.90 and we took away 75p, he would have £2.15. So the question is, how much money should that he give her? The answer is 75p. 
question and that could have been done in a different way what some students like to do in a question like that is to take away the amount of money they've got so they could have done £2.90 take away £1.40 which is £1.50 so he's got £1.50 more than her and if you half that to get 75p that would be how much money he'd have to give her half of the difference Okay, let's have a look at question number 21. And question 21 is a calculator question. And we've got Judy has got £12.30 and Max is £25.20. And the question says, how much money should Max give Judy so they have the same amount of money? And it's a calculator question, like I said, so that's quite nice. Now, there's two different ways we can do this. We can add them together, divide by two and find the midpoint, and then see how much money that you know Max would have to give Judy. Alternatively, we could take them away to work out the difference and half it, and that would be how much money that you know he would have to give her. And we could do it either way. Because it's worksheets and finding the midpoint let's find the midpoint let's find how much money if they shared the money how much money they would both have to begin with so let's take our 25 pound 20 and let's add our 12 pound 30 and whenever we add those we get that's equal to 37 pound 50. now if we take our 37 pound 50 and if we divide that by two we get the midpoint which is 1875. so if judy and max shared the money out equally they would have 18 pound 75 p each now, if we take our 1875 away from how much money Max has to begin with, we can see how much money he would have to give her so they'd have the same amount. So £25.20 take away £18.75 gives us £6.45. So if Max gave Judy £6.45, her amount of money would go up to £18.75 and his amount of money would go down to £18.75. Remember, another way you could do this question is to work out the difference between them. So you could take them away and then divide that by two, and that's how much money then he would have to give her. Okay, let's have a look at question number 22. So question number 22 says, Isaac thinks of two consecutive square numbers. So let's write down our square numbers. One times one is one. Two times two is four. Three times three is nine. Four times four is 16. Five times five is 25, and so on and it says he finds the midpoint of two square numbers so he finds the midpoint of the two consecutive square numbers so maybe one and four or four and nine or nine and 16 and 16 and 25 and so on and he says that his answer is a whole number explain why Isaac is incorrect well if we have a look at these square numbers we've got one which is odd and four which is even so an odd and an even then we've got four and nine again even and odd odd and even even and odd so one's always going to be odd and one's always going to be even and if we add them together like one plus four that's equal to five and then five divided by two is equal to 2.5 and that's not a whole number our next one if we don't four plus nine that's equal to 13 and 13 divided by two is equal to 6.5 again a decimal number and because one's always odd and one's always even the midpoint will always the midpoint will never be a whole number and that's it so we'd explain that Okay, so I've said that with two consecutive square numbers, one will be odd and one will be even, and their midpoint will never be a whole number. And that's it. So these have been the video solutions to the midpoint of two numbers practice questions. I really hope this video has been useful. If it has, please like it. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And thanks very much. Cheers.